Hi everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Not too much preamble today. This is the first ever controller from Rain. It's called the One, and I've had it for about six weeks. So this is not a first look. This is my full review. Let's get into it. With the DJ Tech Market being what it is today, it really was only a matter of time until we saw a controller from Rain. In the Serato era, the brand has been best known for its battle mixers for that software, from the 57 up to the latest 72 Mark II, and the spinning platter 12s have also made a big impact on the scene, being adopted by huge numbers of DJs, a lot more, I'll admit, than I expected. So, in many ways, the feature set of the One is kind of what I would have predicted. It's a pair of spinning platters with a battle-style mixer section in the middle. Price-wise, it comes in at $1,500 in the US, which makes it about as expensive as controllers get without any standalone functionality. But whilst it is pricey compared to other all-in-one controllers, it's rather more reasonable when compared to the 12s, which have a street price of around $900 each. Why would you want to spend $1,500 on a controller? Well, there may be a few reasons, but for most, the main one will probably be those spinning platters. They aren't 12 inch, of course, the size and weight of that would be ridiculous, but they're not quite 7 inch either, they're 7.2 inches. Why the extra 0.2? It's a mystery, but you can still use your own 7 inch vinyl instead of the included acrylic control discs if you like, with just a small underhang. The direct drive motors have plenty of torque, with an option to lower that if you prefer. In use, they feel fantastic. I've said it before, but the truth is that Rain's parent company, In Music, nailed the whole spinning platter control thing years ago. With the caveats that you're playing in internal mode in Serato DJ Pro, not DVS mode, they really do feel like using regular vinyl, with accurate cueing and no drift when scratching. The 1200 style strobe dots on the platter edges help with retaining a familiar feel when you're pitch bending, although I personally lean towards using the pitch bend buttons found on the one instead, having fallen in love with them on the Denon DJ Prime series gear. The inescapable thing which the spinning platters bring to the one is mass. Even in a 7-inch size, actual motors and aluminium platters are never going to be light, and the one weighs in at a fairly hefty 23.5 pounds. Context is important though, so whilst that's approaching double the weight of some competing controllers, it's also not much more than a single 12, so whether that's excessive really depends on your perspective and what devices the one might be replacing or supplementing in your setup. Certainly it won't be unmanageable to carry around for an average person over a reasonable distance, and it's a lot more portable than a pair of 12s or turntables and a mixer. The size certainly helps with the portability too. The one is 26.5 inches wide and 13.5 inches front to back. Remarkably compact, even when compared to older controllers like the Newmark NS7 with similar platter technology. I do like the feet on the bottom, which raise the unit up to around the height of standard mixers and turntables. Another factor in the weight of the one is the build quality, and that's certainly not something to complain about. As is the hallmark of the Rain brand, it foregoes delicate, refined aesthetics in favour of all-metal, tank-like construction, and it feels incredibly sturdy throughout. Likewise, the one is very standard Rain in its sound quality too. With 32-bit digital signal processing, the specs on paper are very close to the 72 Mark II, and in use it sounds much the same, with the punchy, fat sound we expect from Rain at this point. Other brands offer more flat, clinical sound, which some may prefer, but there's no doubt that the one has a lot of the classic Rain warmth and energy in its output, and I like that a lot. They haven't skimped on the phono preamps either, which is sometimes the case on controllers. These sound fantastic with real vinyl, and the one isn't so wide that using turntables alongside it is completely uncomfortable. The device does also support DVS control in Serato DJ Pro if you have the DVS plugin, and it works as a standalone mixer with no computer connected. That brings us to the other connections on the One. The two channels each have a single RCA input, switchable between phono and line. Next to those are the outputs, main out on balanced XLRs and unbalanced RCAs, and a booth output with its own level control, also on balanced XLRs. There are two USB ports for connecting to computers, which is very welcome. Whether for back-to-back -back sets, changeovers, or redundancy, a pair of USBs really should be the default on high-end gear like this. You can switch between them on a per-channel basis with zero fuss. Power is delivered by a standard IEC connector, again something I always prefer to see on devices of this price, and then we have the mic inputs. There are two of those, both with combo XLR and jack sockets, and mic 2 can be switched to an RCA line level AUX input as well. 
Round the front there are separate on off switches, level controls and two band EQ for both. I'd quite like to see Q buttons for them too, the new streaming world we live in has me thinking about headphone usage a lot more, but overall it's a comprehensive good sounding mic section. Similarly the queuing system itself is on point, Q switches on the channels, both sizes of headphone socket and split Q as well as Q master blend. Moving on to the deck sections, it's fair to say there isn't actually much new here. Ultimately, the one is a Serato controller, and that's reflected in the layout and functionality of the decks. That's not to say it's not a good setup, more that if you've played on other Serato DJ Pro gear in recent years, you'll feel right at home on the one very quickly. Each deck has eight RGB performance pads, which are a decent size, comfortable and responsive. Within those pads are the kind of modes you would normally expect, hot cue, pitch play, save loops, loop roll, sampler and slicer, for example. I will note that there is no volume control for the regular Serato sampler on the hardware. If you are hoping that it can be routed via the aux input, that isn't possible. One big thing is the addition of the Scratch Bank. Newly added to the Serato DJ Pro feature set, this allows users to quickly load a selection of eight samples, loops, or even full tracks to either deck, use them, and then switch straight back to the previously loaded track. It's a very cool feature, which offers a lot of creative possibilities. I like that the auto loops have their own section broken out from the pad modes. Having length adjustment and a simple on-off button is always my preferred way to work with loops on Serato hardware. The start-stop buttons for the decks are big and have a nice positive action, and the break time is adjustable with a rotary knob. A couple more notes on the deck sections, the touch strip for scrubbing through tracks seems uninteresting until you need it, and then it works great. And there is a library browse knob on each side, which also loads tracks with a push, nice and intuitive. There's really only one current Serato feature which the decks lack, and that is Silent Q. I really love using that function with turntables and spinning platters in general, so I hope it can be mapped manually at some point down the line. Turning to the mixer section, it's pretty compact, but is still fairly comfortable in terms of spacing and layout. My only concern is how close the left pitch fader is to the left up fader, although in use that hasn't proved to be a problem, and I would always lean towards this kind of layout over a mirror image one. The up faders themselves are nothing to write home about with a fairly stiff, if sturdy, feel. There's a curve control for them on the front panel and individual reverse switches. When it comes to the cross fader, the one is supplied with Rain's latest flagship fader, the Mag 4. This is a big improvement over the earlier Mag 3, which received mixed reviews, it's fair to say. It has a lighter feel and the traditional Rain cutoff shape, which is beloved by many turntablists. Interestingly, it also brings with it a new software feature, with the cut-in distance being adjustable in the Serato DJ Pro settings. It might take a minute to dial in the preferences to exactly your taste, but once you do, it's clear that the Mag 4 is one of the best crossfaders found on any controller out there. I may be at risk of stating the obvious here, but it is worth discussing that the Rain 1 is just a two-channel device, and that might well be a little disappointing to some potential buyers. The additional AUX input does mitigate things somewhat, but compared to a lot of other offerings in this price bracket, it is a notable omission. I'm really not sure that I care about that myself. It's rare for me to use secondary layered decks on four-channel devices, and there's quite a lot to be said about the kind of purity you get from the One, a two decks and mixer kind of experience which I rather enjoy, and it also helps the One remain as compact as it is. But it has to be mentioned, as the majority of competing devices do have four channels, even if sometimes that can feel a bit like a box-ticking exercise instead of something that DJs are crying out for. Another thing found in this category are devices with built-in effects. The One has control over software effects and that's it, no hardware effects of any kind. The implementation is decent with the dual paddles, like those found on the 72 being very intuitive to use. There are buttons to select six different effects inside the software, as well as depth, tap and beat length controls. The effects are post fader and post cross fader too, so no complaints there. But if you operate the One as a standalone mixer with no computer attached, you're stuck with filters and EQs and that's it. Fundamentally there is enough variety and quality in Serato's effects for most users and I suspect the majority of people will be happy, but again it deserves to be mentioned. Overall, when you look at the One as what it's designed to be, a top quality bomb-proof Serato DJ Pro controller with those fabulous spinning platters, it is a real success. Regular viewers will already know that I'm a big fan of 7-inch vinyl, which perhaps biases me towards the One more than some other people, but this is one of those devices where I challenge anyone to play on it for more than a few minutes and not enjoy themselves. It's the best of classic and current technology in a reasonably portable form, the kind of device that will make a superb centerpiece for mobile 
or DJs, a compact system for streaming rigs, and will also be right at home when taken out to bar or lounge gigs when the world eventually opens up again. So there you go, my take on the Rain 1. There's one word that comes to mind when I think about my time playing with this device. That word is fun. It's just a joy to turn this thing on, jam out, cutting, scratching, mixing and blending. It feels raw, it feels organic, it is just a blast. That's not to say that it's some kind of toy. Now this is a pro level device with a price tag to match, but it will be very at home in any professional environment that you decide to put it into. It may not be for everyone. Some people might need four channels. Some people might not be used to spinning platters. They might have grown up with static platter controllers or with media players, and this whole switch to a spinning platter might be a challenge for them. But if you come from vinyl roots or if you want to go down that road to get in touch with that kind of vinyl feel, then this device will serve you very well indeed. It's well made, connectivity on point, and the main thing is, every time I use it, it makes me smile. And from any bit of DJ gear, you can't really ask much more than that. Thanks for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.